got your Bibles with you. <clears throat> I want to share something with you today. You know, I believe that, that thing my wife just read about people going to church for so many years and wondering why. Sometimes we come to church and I, I see people entering into different years and even going to church and they have no expectancy. I mean, expectancy is good. So I want to speak to you about the expectant heart, but there's also those with no expectancy. There's those with unrealistic expectations. And there are those who have the right balance. And we're going to cover all of them today because I'm expecting great things this year. Now, I expect God to do great things. Do you? I come to church every week and I have an expectancy. Sometimes if you live your life without any expectancy, you have nothing to look forward to, you're not grasping in anything, you're in this case, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be mode. And a lot of people just accept life the way it is. You don't take life just as it is. The, the Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent, shout it with me, the violent take it by force. There's some things you're going to have to wrestle from the devil's hands this year. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of um, 2 Kings, chapter 5. I want to help you for this coming year. And just to let you know, for those of you who thought your times were so tough last year you wouldn't make it, guess what? You made it. When they hit with the credit crunch last year, many of you thought, God, how will I last? But you're here. And you know what? This deception of this, this mindset that, you know, I'm a Christian, um, I'm born again, I love Jesus, and this year is going to be trouble-free. Is it going to be trouble-free? Is there going to be challenges? Is there going to be victories? Are you going to have some days you feel down? Are you? But you have the victory. And this is the problem is uh, many of us go into life not expecting anything to go wrong. I expect attacks. Because there is a devil out there that is very real. And I found out the hungrier you are for God, the more you're going to get attacked. But the greater the victories. Now, look at... Um, 2 Kings chapter 5 with me, <clears throat> and verse 1. I want to show you something here. It says, Now Naaman, captain of the hosts of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and he was honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Watch this. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out the land of Israel. Underline that word. What's the next word say? What does your Bible say? A what? A little maid. Tell your neighbor, a little maid. It's interesting. I read this and I thought, a little maid. Not a maid, but a little maid. <clears throat> they took a little maid captive. Now, can you imagine if it was one of today's little Christians and something has gone wrong in your life? Somehow, something didn't work out. Could you imagine this maid, this little maid? She was taken captive and she was made a slave. Things went wrong in her life. But you have to understand that sometimes that things happen and it's for a purpose. Because watch, watch this little maid. I, I read this and I, I read it several times. I kept looking at this little maid. It says, she was a little maid. And where was I? Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and brought away captive out the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. What was she? She became a servant or a maid. 
taken away from her family and from her home. But you must understand, listen to me, church. I don't care what you go through. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. This maid was in her home, in the comfort of her home. They took her. She obviously loved God because what I'm going to read next to you tells you her mind was still on the things of God. Not sulking or depressed or crying because why would this happen to me? How could God let this happen to me? Because he has a plan and a purpose for your life. That's why things happen to you. And like some of you right now drinking coffee, how can you tell someone what coffee tastes like when you've never tasted it yourself? How can you tell somebody how to stand in tough times when you've never stood in tough times yourself? How can you tell a single mother how to, to stand and how to get through that loneliness and that rejection unless you've also been there? How can you tell somebody how to have peace in the midst of a storm when you've never even seen a storm? That's what I liked. I said to Trinity 5-7, that they're singing this year is different to what it was before. And the, the, the manager says, yes, you're right. And I said, what, what I know, it wasn't that they sung better. It was they sung with more depth. They've been through some stuff. And when you've been through some stuff, you can relate to other people. When you've been through some stuff, you don't preach from your head, you preach from your heart. It's a very different difference when someone sings from their heart than when they sing from their head. It is very different when someone preaches to you from their heart rather than from their notes that was in their head. Watch this woman. And the Syrians, verse 3 says, And she said unto her mistress, would God my Lord were with the prophet that was in Samaria. She's taken captive. She's not feeling sorry for herself. She's not depressed or crying. When she sees the man, her captor, that is leprous, rather than say, thank you God, he'll die soon. Maybe I will get released when he's dead. She wasn't looking at his affliction with joy she was wondering how can God help this man she says I wish he was with the prophet if he was with the prophet God can wrought a miracle in his life you must understand wherever you end up this year whatever situation you end up in some of you are in a job you hate and the job was not there for you just to be, get promotion God may move you just to win one person. He may put you in a place. Some of you, you, you know, have you ever worked with Lucifer's sister? Or his cousin? It's your boss. And you just dread going to work because that person seems to hate you. Do you know why you're there? You're to love them into the kingdom. You say, but every time I try to help them, they get worse. Love never so no matter how much they reject you, how much they shout you, love, there is no weapon for love. And when you love someone, no matter how much they retaliate, there's no defense. Your love will pierce their heart. 